The following program deals with a controversial subject. The theories expressed are not the only possible interpretation. Viewers are invited to make a judgment based on all available information. That's a UFO up there. The speed was extraordinary. Oof. It looks like a flying saucer. I made it my job to get it on tape. Something was out there. Something overpowered the satellite. Franklin, uh, we see a long line, a couple of star-like things, and a lot of things swimming in the foreground. Can you describe what you're seeing? If it is a hoax, it was done very well. It just disappeared, vanished. It's gone. It's gone. I don't know. Probably moved 100 miles in a matter of a second or two. The velocity is impossible. What I saw in that footage blew my mind. You can no longer trust what the tape shows. Every attempt to get to the bottom of this has been stonewalled. There's more to this world than you see. I think there's every reason to fear these things. As the 20th century came to a close, more UFO cases were being reported than at any time in history. And not surprisingly, video cameras are now capturing hundreds of these baffling unidentified flying objects which continue to puzzle both those who believe and those who don't. Tonight, we will present the most compelling videotape evidence of extraordinary and unknown craft ever shown on television. And hear from a top government physicist, a video analyst, and the eyewitnesses themselves. Could these be actual alien spacecraft? Sophisticated military vehicles hidden from the public or incredible hoaxes? You decide for yourself as we investigate UFOs, the best evidence ever caught on tape, too. video you are now seeing has never been shown publicly. Visually, it is perhaps the most spectacular UFO footage ever shot. Experts we called on to analyze it are intrigued. As incredible as it sounds, it appears to be a real flying saucer caught on tape. I got it on film here. I'm zoomed into it. It was shot by a young man who was attending an outdoor arts festival in Nevada last September. Speaking for the first time on national television, the cameraman, who goes by the name Eric, recounts his UFO sightings and how it felt to capture it on tape. I reached for my camera, and I zoomed in and uh, got a close-up of it that, uh, that the naked eye could not make out. Because to the naked eye, it looked like just a speck of red light way up there in the sky. When you zoom in, you see this incredible array of, of lights that are going around a rim, uh, I think the footage speaks for itself. We just sat there just so in awe of what it was, not knowing anything. It looks like a flying saucer, you know, but you, know, you try, you try and, and your mind's going, no, this can't be. Eric claims that shortly after beginning to videotape the UFO, his batteries ran out. When he returned with the camera fully charged, the mysterious object had vanished. It must have left pretty quickly because it caught it sitting there motionless. As you'll see, it does not move, and the camera's lock is sitting steadily on the ground. So that's what makes it so interesting to me. But could this merely be someone's intricately designed device made to wow the Nevada festival participants? Or is it an actual hovering craft of unknown origin? I don't see any indications that this was added after the event. Whatever this light phenomena is, it seems to be at that location. The most significant detraction to this being a UFO is the fact that it appeared during a festival that celebrates light sculpture. So my guess would be this is some kind of floating device with lots of Christmas lights that's being suspended in the air somehow, possibly a balloon but it seems to genuinely be there in the sky. This uh, video clearly shows an object out there, saw some sort of a 
some sort of, of a device, man-made or not man-made, but an artificial device with lights that appear to be going around, flashing on and off in a uh, very strange manner. Uh, one could uh, argue that it's uh, a real UFO. Yet Eric himself seems to suggest both on the tape and in his interview. The object he videotaped could have a very earthly explanation. Yeah, it looks good. It's a really good effect, whatever that is. It's a really good effect. Being that we're uh, out there with a lot of creative individuals, that, that somebody somehow managed to suspend the most brilliant light sculpture up in the heavens. That's a, that's a pretty beautiful object, whatever it is. October 1994. This incredible video of what appears to be a gigantic UFO hovering next to New York City's World Trade Center was shot by a group of Italian tourists aboard a cruise ship. Is it possible the video actually shows a huge flying saucer over Manhattan? If this image is real, it's amazing. What strikes me as being unconvincing about this videotape shot in lower Manhattan is the, uh, the camera operator, even though he's got a huge UFO appearing by the Twin Towers, actually moves the camera away and down. And on the audio portion of the tape, no one is reacting to what should be a terrifying phenomenon. And here you have a video of a huge, what would be a huge object, if it's a real object out there at the distance of the Twin Trade Centers. So you would expect that the people who got that video would have done something with it. They would have told the UFO groups. Instead, this, this video just sort of remained underground. Um, has been rediscovered right here on this show. Though the World Trade Center UFO video remains a mystery, other people around the country are actually using video cameras to capture extraordinary objects that cannot be explained conventionally. Some people are actually becoming UFO video hunters. Chris Miller is one of them. I guess it started with my grandfather. Um, he died in 1980 and left me all of his material and, um, on Eric Von Daniken. And um, Eric Von Daniken's whole idea was that we were visited once before. And um, it was my idea that I want to try to get, go out and try to get proof for this. It started basically in five years ago in Michigan, while we were living in Michigan, and I caught one object on video, and I brought it to the airport, and no one knew what it was there, and that's how the ball started rolling. On May 2nd, 1998, I, we were outside. My son and I were outside um, playing in the dirt, and um, I look up, and I saw, and it was kind of cloudy that day, and um, I saw something sitting up in the clouds. So I ran real quick. My camcorder was ready to go. I came back, and I zoomed right up to it for about... 15 minutes I have this on video, but for the first five minutes, um, all of a sudden it disappeared. Um, it went from one part of the sky um, at least 30 miles, 20, 30 miles in a split second. So I zip the camera over and I catch it again. And um, it was just absolutely fantastic because the object is huge. It's over, definitely over 100 feet in diameter. I set the zoom on infinity, basically, and zoomed into the maximum, and um, it looks I mean, it's hard to t say what it looks like, but it looks like a flying saucer. Incredibly, Miller was able to capture this amazing UFO cluster and two orbs on video as well. When I was taping the cluster, uh, my heart was racing. Uh, uh, you can even hear me breathing hard. After I realized what I captured on tape, it felt great. For the past three years, I've been told so many things, I'm not really sure what to believe anymore. Naval Intelligence um, studied my footage for four months, and their only comment was they have no idea what the objects are. I have no idea what I'm catching on video. If these objects are ours, military, um, secret projects, um, we're at least a thousand years beyond our present technology that they let us know about. I personally think it's a desensitization process that our public is going through by seeing these things. Try to have your camcorder handy and ready at all times so when you do see something, you'll catch something amazing on video, and then we all can come together and go to Congress with this, and then they, the public hearings could start, and um, the Americans could learn the truth once and for all. And Miller is not alone in his desire to capture UFO evidence for public scrutiny. Tom Saborin, another UFO hunter, began videotaping UFOs after seeing extraordinary footage taken over Gulf Breeze, Florida in the early 1990s. It's breathtaking. When I first seen the videos of, in Gulf Breeze, it, it made me go out and get a camera. I, I started going out every night 
And uh, every day, I made it my job to get it on tape. It looked like a big cigarette, and it was flying across the sky. It looked like four balls that was connected. The third ball to the end was red. The last ball, white, 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 red. I think it either could be extraterrestrial or some type of new animal. I'm just a hunter. We don't want to hear about it. We want to see it. Whether UFOs turn out to be majestic light sculptures, unknown craft above major cities, or possible military vehicles, there's no doubt that mysterious things are being captured in the skies over America. Maybe with more and more video evidence being studied, answers to the UFO riddle will start to emerge. Coming up next, is this the biggest UFO ever caught on tape? This UFO here, I measured approximately two to three miles in diameter against the 12 mile length of the tether. And later, is this video of a captured alien too good to be true? The thing about the footage and the, the thing that grabs people is that after you look at it, it has this kind of creepy quality that tends to get to people and it tends to kind of hook them. While UFOs have been caught on tape all over America, UFO researchers have wondered for years what NASA cameras may have managed to capture in outer space. Franklin, uh, we see a long line. Amazingly, these shocking video sequences shown here for the first time on television might prove once and for all that NASA knows UFOs are navigating just above the Earth and dangerously close to our space shuttle missions. When I saw the tape, I realized that I was looking at very exciting, incredible footage that has never before been seen by the public. David Sarita, a former Defense Department subcontractor, has been studying NASA's possible interest in UFOs for over 15 years. And he believes this incident, which has since become legendary on the internet as the Tether incident, may prove UFOs are real. February 25th, 1996. 100 miles above Africa, an experimental satellite system attached to a 12-mile long electricity conducting tether suddenly breaks. Within moments, the satellite drifts almost 100 miles away. Nitrogen gas gathers around the tether, effectively turning it into a gigantic fluorescent light in space. Incredibly, it seems to attract some strange company. You see a swarm of what may be UFOs flying around it. And then we see the cameras zoom in on these objects, and we see giant disks passing behind this tether. But the astronauts involved in the mission seem to have a more mundane explanation. It's a little bit of debris that uh, kind of flies with us. But is it simply debris, as is often claimed by NASA when looking at alleged UFOs in space? Watch what happens when the cameras zoom in. What we're seeing on the screen here appears very small, but if you blew this up, you would see that these objects are enormous in size. This UFO here, I measured approximately two to three miles in diameter against the 12 mile length of the tether. If it's further behind the tether than I think, it could be much larger. The potential size of these UFOs is clearly mind boggling. And according to Sarita, so is the advanced technology behind them. Would a piece of space junk pulsate in a regular pattern as we see here? This spiral, to me, suggests a gravity wave that is stronger than light. This, to me, is proof in quantum physics that these UFOs are utilizing very advanced forms of gravity energy and zero-point energy. Sarita believes that our space program does not yet possess this technology, nor the capability to perform the startling maneuvers displayed by these UFOs caught on tape during another shuttle mission. If you look over here, you're going to see something that a meteorite cannot do. You're going to see a high-speed angular turn, and the object continues. The G-forces on a turn like this would flatten any astronaut into a pancake. Could all these objects be written off as mere space debris, as NASA contends? If that's so, then how can they explain this eye-opening footage of UFOs forming above the Earth? As these UFOs reach their positions in the circle, they light up, showing incredible intelligence. There we see a UFO light up right in the middle of the circle. This shows intelligence. 
Whatever the UFOs videotaped by NASA cameras are, there's no doubt that back down on Earth, they continue to be filmed over every major country around the globe. February 3rd, 1995. During the early morning hours, a woman tapes this mysterious craft hovering above Beijing, China. Notice how the glowing object floats, making no sharp turns or sudden maneuvers. While some dismiss the craft as a blimp, airline pilot and UFO researcher Jim Courant is not so sure. I'm quite aware of what a blimp looks like. And these advertising blimps are in many areas around the world. And I have checked with the blimp company that supplies many of the uh, advertising blimps. We also did a, a check with the, the control tower, the radar military and civilian over there, and there were no registered aircraft in the area at that time, blimp or otherwise. So I'm not quite sure what it is. May 29th, 1993, Stuttgart, Germany. Halfway around the world, then 15-year-old Kai Metzger recorded a craft remarkably similar to the one seen over Beijing, China. I saw this thing and uh, I thought, oh my God, what's that? And because of that, I, I took my camera and, and shoot it and I was really afraid of it. What are we to make of these unusual looking craft videotaped in the skies above China and Germany? Are they blimps or something much more inexplicable? Dr. Bruce McAbee believes he has the answer. We have studied a number of videos with this sort of an image and in some cases have been able to absolutely prove that this is an image of a blimp which has lights on the inside, a transparent skin. This shape right here matches very closely or perhaps exactly with the known shapes of internally lighted blimps. Derby, England, March 13, 1995. This unidentified flying object was caught on tape for nearly an hour. The strangely shaped object was described as being completely silent. A few years later, in August 1998, a large metallic object was caught on tape again in England, this time in the village of Silbury Hill, an area famous for UFO sightings. The noiseless craft was said to hover in the sky for two to three minutes before disappearing, and then it returned, then blinked out. During a five-month-long wave of UFO sightings in Peru in February 1999, two photographers captured the same imposing object on the very same evening just outside Lima. The next night, this mysterious craft was caught on tape again for a full 40 minutes as it hovered above the nearby town of Pueblo Libre. Look at this red glow on the object's underside. Later, three distinct white lights appear on top. Jim Courant finds the images baffling. You have something that was so strange that uh, anybody seeing it uh, would have to say, I can't explain it. May 15th, 1996, Quito, Ecuador. A round object was spotted in the night sky. Again, the craft exhibited an elaborate array of lights. No known man-made object or aircraft looks like this. December 3rd, 1994, Monterey, Mexico. What you are seeing is perhaps the most compelling nighttime UFO video ever caught on tape in that region. A respected UFO researcher, Santiago Itoria, shot the tape. From the mountain emerged this huge, red glowing, very bright object. So I began filming. And uh, we realized that it was indeed a UFO, a triangular shape, red glowing UFO, very silent, and it was very low altitude. Look here as Ituria zooms in with his camera, focusing on its mysterious red glow. We took two days reviewing the video, making analysis on the computer, and we discovered that uh, this UFO has this kind of energy all around. Can there be any simple explanations for the strange objects continuously being recorded around the globe and even above it? Most UFO investigators remain perplexed. Interestingly, some don't see it as a threat, but as a blessing. We don't know what they are, where do they come from, what do they want, but we are convinced that this presence is positive to our lives. Coming up is a Mexico UFO wave leading people to believe that aliens are landing. So when the, he meet the occupants, 
he said that they were beings of light, kind of a spiritual extraterrestrial. And later, is Israel waging secret combat with UFOs? Israel has never admitted to UFOs, and I know for a fact that our Air Force is chasing them constantly. I was in the Air Force. When UFOs, the best evidence ever caught on tape two, returns.